Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at OptionAlpha.com where we show you how to make smarter trades. In today's video update, we're going to talk through and kind of go over the logistics of how the trade tab is set up inside Thinkorswim. You know, in fact, the trade tab is probably one of the most important tabs in here, obviously, because you're setting up your trades, you're picking your probabilities, uh, your deltas if you use deltas. So it's really important that you understand kind of all the things that are inside the trade tab and kind of at your fingertips here. So well, let's go over it in this video together. So the first thing that you'll see when you go into the trade tab uh, and the main trade tab itself is the basically all products sub tab. Now for this discussion today and pretty much everything that we do here at Option Alpha, you can get to most of the options and stocks from the all products tab. The Forex <clears throat> by name is obviously the Forex tab. Futures you can trade here. Active Trader and Pairs Trader is just another way to trade similar products, uh, stocks and options and pairs are just a little bit quicker. Uh, so you don't need those. We usually do all of our stuff with this All Products tab, which is right here, and then just type in the ticker symbol that we have up in the top left hand corner. Um, so the first thing you have to see is that everything is broken up into basically these categories here. So I'll kind of start, slowly start unwrapping this, if you will. The first is the underlying, and this is really the stock or the security that you have typed in here. So it's commonly referred to as the underlying. If you're new to, to trading and investing, <clears throat> underlying could be the shares. It could be the ETF. It could be the, um, the futures. You can type in a futures contract here. It'll still show up. So whatever the underlying asset is here. Then you have your trade grid, which is just a way to um, see some different charts and stuff. You have your option chain, which is really the most important thing for us as options traders. And then you have some other stuff like option statistics for the day, time and sales, and then product depth. Okay, so again, the main ones that we use are the underlying and the option chain. That's where 90% of your activity is going to go. So once I open the underlying, there's a couple things that you can see. And again, I'm just opening kind of all the tabs here so you can see what's in here. First, you have uh, obviously your last price of the day. And again, the market's open right now. Markets are down just a little bit at the time we're doing this. The net change on the S&P, the bid and the ask, the size of the last trade, the volume today, high, low, open, et cetera, et cetera. Then you also have your yield. Uh, so whatever dividend's paying right now, what's the dividend yield? The PE ratio, earnings per share, the dividend amount, the frequency when it goes X dividend, and then the high, lows, et cetera, and the beta. Now beta is good. We'll talk about beta later on the course when we talk about analyzing different portfolios and kind of putting things together, but beta is a representation of how a stock would move with the market. Obviously the beta of the SPY is pretty close to one, which means it's gonna move with the S&P 500. It's basically the, the small child ETF of the S&P 500, right? <clears throat> So what we usually do is just have the, you know, just kind of the main stuff up so we can see what the price is. The next one down is your trade grid. Now we do not honestly use this at all. I'm just showing you what it is. You can type in a symbol and you can see where things are being traded at. This is more on the stock side of things. Uh, so again, it's there. You can use it. Feel free to explore. We don't use it. The third one down is the main one that we use. And this is the option chain. This is where your option pricing stuff happens. This is uh, commonly referred to as an option pricing table, if you will. Uh, but this is where all of your information about what contracts you can trade and are available are kind of housed. The first thing you have to know about the trade tab is that it's really divided out into the weekly and the monthly contracts. Now the monthly contracts don't have a tag like the weekly and the quarterly contracts do. Um, we usually focus for most of our trading here at Option Alpha on the monthly contracts. So these would be these ones, the Aprils, the Mays, the June, et cetera, right? These are the third Friday of every month. <clears throat> Those are the ones that usually have the most volume, the most liquidity. The weeklies are fine in most of the bigger securities, probably like SPY are fine, but you'll just have to check for the lower um, or smaller securities, the one-off names, if those weekly options are really, really worth it for you to trade. You can actually toggle these weekly contracts off if you want to uh, by just going here, and then you can say, instead of all expiration dates, um, you can say, okay, I just want the regulars, you know, and I just wanna see those, right? So March, April, May, June, et cetera, okay? <clears throat> I do not do that. I use the weeklies in there just so I see what's available. Um, but again, it's up to you what you wanna do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this back so that we can see the uh, the weeklies in there. Okay, good. Now inside of here, the column down the le the middle of the screen, I guess, for the actual contract dates, this is how many days are left until expiration. So you can see here for the March contracts that expire on the 17th of March, 2017, those have 11 days to go until expiration. 
The weekly contracts, which are right beyond that, expire on the 22nd of March, 2017, have 16 days to go. So you can see all the dates and all the respective time until expiration. So as you're starting to use some of our uh, watch list and back testing software, this is where you would start to look to use and plug into uh, both the software for back testing and for optimization, the dates until expiration, uh, so that you can start finding you know better trades and kind of optimizing your trades. When you open up one of these tabs, and let me just start by opening up just the March monthly contracts, <clears throat> you'll see a lot of stuff in here. And let me just go back to, I think the default uh, looks like this. It's just layout X plus net change. I'm actually, I'm gonna toggle the underlying off so we have more real estate to work with here. Uh, but when you open up these tabs, you're gonna see a lot of different strike prices in here. Now you can condense down all these strike prices in the middle, uh, which are all these rows, these are all the strike prices, to something you know a little bit more manageable, say like 10 uh, overall, right? So this will condense everything down to about 10. You can you know do 12 or 14. I like to do all so I can see everything. On the left-hand side are all your call options. So this is a, gonna be a standard layout no matter what broker platform you're on. The left-hand side is gonna be all the call options. On the right-hand side is gonna be all the put options. That's usually how it works. Down the middle of the screen is gonna be your strike prices because those are the same for both calls and puts. They go in uh, ascending order. So basically the lowest price to the highest price. So it's a little bit confusing. Most people think it goes the opposite way. It doesn't. It goes in ascending order in most cases. So you have like 236 followed by 237, 238, 239, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Most of the broker platforms have the bid ask spread as a default in there. So just the difference between the bid at the bid price and the ask price for people buying and selling these option contracts, that's going to be a default inside thinkorswim that's going to be in there no matter what. So on both sides, you'll see the bid ask spread. Uh, the, usually the regular layout that's in there is last and then net change for the day. So you can see, for example, like these options here, the 237 and a half calls uh, had a last traded price right now of 154. The change on the day was $44. They went down in value uh, versus the other side of it. They went up in value by $24. Okay. It's actually pretty easy in this case to actually change the layout and the columns that are here. So I want to show you how we do it. Um, there's a couple defaults that are in Thinkorswim. You have volume and open interest, uh, probabilities, extrinsic, intrinsic value, delta gamma theta, et cetera. Uh, we use one at Option Alpha that's just a custom one called Option Alpha. And the columns that we have so that you can do it on your end are mark, volume, open interest, probability of being in the money, and delta. So again, you may have slightly different ones. You may not want to use Delta or one of the other ones. That's just the ones that I look at on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, how you change that is you just go in here to customize, and then you just can move over these different, you know, um, I guess functions, right? So, or these different columns. So, mark you could move over, volume, open interest, probability, etc. Okay. And once you do that, then you have this custom one, and you can just save it. So, just like we did the styles on the charts, you can go ahead and save this as a style, and then you can keep it in here forever. Another really cool function, and let me just open up some more strikes so we can see this happen. Another cool function within here is the ability to, instead of looking at a single option, which is mainly the, the view that I use, by the way, is mainly a single option, you can actually default to look at sets of strategies. So vertical spread could be a debit spread or credit spread. Ratios, calendars, diagonals, straddles, strangles, butterflies, condors, iron condors, etc. So let me just go to vertical so you can see what that looks like. And now down the middle of the screen, when I switch to vertical layout, notice how the strike prices now are grouped. So now you can see, okay, this is what the 235, 235 and a half spread trades for, right? So this is the spread and this spread and this spread and this spread, right? So it does the math for you in a sense. And instead of clicking on two different strikes to build out your trade, you just click on one. So if I just clicked on this, that would actually build out the full entire order for me to do in one click, okay? Now, the thing you have to be careful about, let me just go like an iron condor, for example. The thing you have to be careful about when doing this and why I don't prefer to do this, just full disclosure, is because it naturally groups all of the legs that are closest together in the same order, okay? So there's no real logic behind it. Like we would never do an iron condor this tight where it would be like a half point wide iron condor. It's just not something we would ever do, but the system just doesn't know that. So it naturally groups 
the closest strike prices together that could create that possible trade, okay? So we would never do that. That's why we end up using just a single for most of our layout, and then we manually go through and select it. And we'll do this in later videos where we show you how to enter trades inside the Thinkorswim platform. But for this case, uh, for this purpose of this video, again, we just wanna use just the single layouts. Um, so again, all of those different strike prices and different expiration months are down the left-hand side. You can see, at least for SPY, these go out very, very far, all the way to December 2019 at the time that we're doing this video. So lots of opportunity to trade options um, really, really far out. Down below, there's option statistics for today. Um, this just gives you a rundown of some of the stuff that's going on today, how many calls, how many puts are being traded, um, how many above or below ask price or mid price, et cetera. So um, I think it's important to know, you know, kind of glance at these now and then, but again, this is on a daily basis. So it could be high volume, low volume, and you know, really depends on the volume and who's in the market that day. Some of the option time and sales stuff, uh, again, is down below. So uh, this will start to populate as, as trades go through. Again, it's not that important for us to, <laughs> and starting to see that's jamming up our system to throw these in here. Uh, but again, it's not that important to see exactly where things go. In my case, it's just important to see mostly um, the volume and the open interest for actual strike prices. And then product details down below, uh, when you open that up, that's gonna give you some of these uh, smiles, these volatility smiles and curves. Uh, that just shows you kind of the skew that some of these contracts have. Again, you can toggle here from all series and kind of toggle this off. And maybe you just wanna look at like one particular month. Um, and let's say you wanna look at the March contracts. Okay, what's the skew that we have right now? Like where does it go? How far out is it, et cetera, right? So where's the implied volatility for these different things? You can look at the deltas and you can look at the gammas and see what the gamma risk is. So a lot more details start to go in there again. It's not stuff that you necessarily need to look at every single day, um, but something that's there if you need it and you want to kind of dig a little bit deeper into the pricing. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers the trade tab um, as much as detail as we want to get into in this video. Like I said, we'll get into in other videos some more training on the trade tab. Again, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you have any comments or feedback, uh, please let me know, add them in the comment section right below. If you love this video, thought it was helpful, please consider sharing it online. Help spread the word about what we're trying to do here at Option Alpha. And until next time, happy trading.